Nice pipe, bro. Okay, it's loud in the shop because we have every fan going, but welcome back. We're back from vacation. Uh, Owen's getting ready to leave on vacation. Bye. But uh, I'm back and Chris is sick. Literally the text I got this morning was, I'm sick, not coming in. He's a man of few words. Yeah. Uh, but welcome back. It's good to have you back. So let's give you another shop update. Uh, we'll run around here and show you what we got going on. We'll start with Aaron's. This is Aaron Reed's. This is on a Rev B airbag chassis. Underneath the cover is an LSA that we got from Street Machinery. Um, but this thing had a ton of rust. So we, you can see most of it while the truck's up in the air anyway, so we'll show you it from the underside. Obviously new rockers, and this ties into the step or the running board on the inside and goes all the way up to the floor. Um, the bottom section here of the A-pillar, some pieces he had to make himself. Like the outside of the door, he made all this, but the inner structure we had to slab in. I can show you on that one. Um, I think that was the majority of it, but this doesn't look like a lot, but that's a lot of work. So you can see the driver's door on this side. So not quite done, but this is a replacement piece that we got from Chrome Guy. But then the outer piece that you can see from here down, Chris made himself and then it gets pinched, folded around, and then he'll come back and spot weld this. So the whole bottom of the door is rebuilt. That door was worse. This whole pocket had to be rebuilt on that door. But on this door, it's basically the bottom six inches of the door, inside and out. Um, and then the rust repair on this side was more extensive. So since the door's off, you can kind of see the running board, the step, this plate, it all has to tie back into the floor. It's got a little bit done in the back but then this whole A-pillar was way worse. So from here all the way up to the cowl, this is a new piece. Um, and then this support under here, the cap support, this guy was toast too. So that's a new one of those. And then you can see we filled in around the trans tunnel, the firewall's done. From back here, you can see we've got the brake pedal bracket in, and basically the rust repair on this thing is almost done with the exception of these rear cap corners. So we gotta get the cap back off so that we can do these cap corners. And you can see there, and this is kind of the condition that the whole truck was in. Like, you can just take this off probably. You can speed this part up. Or not, maybe not. But anyway, that piece is supposed to be there. So that's kind of the condition a lot of this stuff was in. And just like any rust repair job, you start peeling away layers and it exposes more rust. And I mean, there's probably, God, there's probably almost 100 hours in rust repair. So if you're doing a patina build, this is kind of the only way to do it. Um, if you're painting something, it's probably cheaper to buy a new cab. Just go from there. But, and we've kind of done multiples of that. So like Victor's truck, who was very similar to this truck over here, um, which let's go look at that. But Victor's truck was very similar, but we're painting that truck. So we could buy a brand new cab for around 10 grand, somewhere like that. Or you put 100 hours at 140 bucks an hour, you're 14 grand. But on a patina truck, you're gonna save the money in the paint job, because you're not gonna paint it. But over here, you can see, this is um, Alan's truck. The rust on this was really bad. So we're putting a whole new floor in it. So we braced the cab, Owen did something really cool and he pinned the cab mount bolts. So we know that the floor landed in the exact same spot that it needed to. And then he ran this tube across the back and he ran all this off of the stock stuff. So he knew he could just push the floor back up to this tube and line it up with that and we know we're lined up. So now this floor has got to get somewhat burned in, enough to where we can support it. There's Owen, he's the trans tunnel guy right now. So, so now what we have to do is get this floor kind of tacked in here so that we can get it off the lift and we need to put the doors back on it. And then once the doors are back on it, we'll do the outer rockers because you want to have the door on for the outer rocker so that you make sure that, you know, you don't have the door here and the rocker in here or vice versa, the rocker out here, you know. So get the floor tacked in place, then the doors can go back on, then we'll do the outer rockers. That is for this truck back here which you can see we have 
another Rev B chassis. And we have a Don Hardy engine and it's covered in dust right now because their blankets are dusty. But we keep everything covered so it doesn't get messed up. But the bed on this one already has a ton of work done to it. So tubs have been extended. Plate for the hinges is already in. All the framework's done. If you come around to the back, you'll see that the sheet metal back here is already done. And we even have like a charge port pocket. So this bed is ready for wood for the opening. So this whole thing will open up. It'll all be wood bed when it's closed. You won't even know that it opens. So similar to ones we've done before. Like I said, this truck is staying patina. So some of the areas, we kind of have to balance how we're going to do it. But this is the same way we did my truck. So this would be... This be nice when it's done. It's nice another patina truck. Very similar to the turbo truck of mine, but um, green instead of blue and no crazy exhaust coming out through the hood. But other than that, same formula. Rev B chassis, Curry axle, um, Curry gears. It'll all be AccuAir. Um, this has a 6.2 from Don Hardy doing like 550 horse going through a 4L65 that Jason over Choice Transmission built for us. Right on over. This thing is now a tool bench, but this is uh, Stevens. And if you haven't been following the channel, whatever the YouTube channel things are called, page, channel, whatever, then the quick rundown on this is we started this truck a couple years ago. He brought it back to Carlsbad, New Mexico, built some of the bed work, and then decided he was never gonna get to it. So flash forward a couple years, we got it back here. We're putting fenders on it. We're gonna narrow the axle. Thought it would look better with the axle narrowed a little bit than extending these out. So the only extension work that's been done is kind of just to tie them together. So we obviously lengthen them down so that they're gonna lay on the ground at the same point as the front fender. We gotta build running boards for it. We gotta build a bumper filler plate for it. We gotta make the door open. We gotta do the AccuAir. We gotta do the fuel system. So this will get mounted back here underneath, easy to get to. We still gotta make a gas tank for it. Sorry, diesel tank for it, fuel tank. Rev B, Rev B, Rev B. Another Rev B over here. Speaking of over here, let's go look. Aaron's truck, bouncing around a little bit, just cause we're gonna go through this quickly, but heart fabs going in Aaron Reed's. I think in the bed, when we get to the bed, I think I'm going to do like the fleet side inner fenders, like the regular wheel tubs. But uh, we're going to keep it under the hood with the heart fabs. We got Bronco axles, which I think over at Eye Candy, the Bronco is in the booth for the first round of Prime. So that truck should be coming apart for powder coat soon. But before, we got to mock up those axles, put the brakes on from bare, make sure everything's good. Should be easy enough, quick enough. We have Brandon Wallen's truck. Uh, this probably looks very similar to last video. We've been kind of collecting parts for it. It came out a little earlier than it was supposed to because he was moving. So Tray 5 storage facility is in full effect here. Haven't touched that. Haven't touched this. Waiting on money for that and time to work on it over here. But Milan's still doing house renovations. So as soon as he's done with that, we'll start working on that again. And then this thing, we're waiting on time, but we're also waiting on some parts. So. Just got a transmission in from uh, Jason over at Choice Transmission. Got a converter that we spec'd when we did all the engine work, which you saw us doing last time. We've got Marlin's truck. Um, got the engine back from machining. Started putting it together. I went over to Kyle's. I put all the new valve springs in it. Uh, measured for push rods. Got all the push rods here, but. The story of this engine continues, like we had a broken um, rocker support. Not that we would reuse the head bolts, but we noticed that the head bolts were reused already, but just kind of chasing around parts for the thing. Like uh, we got a new cam retainer plate, but the new plates are countersunk bolts. Old plate was not countersunk. Chevy doesn't have the countersunk ones. So stupid things like that. Now we got it all. Um, glass is in it now. That's probably the only new thing since the last video is now we have glass in it front and back. So James at State 48 came over, put our glass in. And then earlier today, we just threw the bed on because Frank's done buffing it. He wanted it out of his shop. It's fine to go on now anyway. So it's just sitting there. He's bedlining the underside of the fenders. Once he gets the fenders done, 
we'll get this bed squared up, get the fenders on, and start figuring out what we're doing for wood. We'll have the engine back in hopefully soon and uh, get this thing wrapped up. Kratos' truck. This truck's been here for a long time. Right before I left, this went to Pack Coast Powder. And then while I was gone, they brought it back. The guys got it together. This is a six liter engine. Don't know where it was built. Chris had it built before he brought it to us. It's running Holly Electronics. And then we've got a T56 manual six speed. Same, same transmissions in the turbo truck. Let's go look at the pace truck. I haven't talked about the pace truck yet. Don't look at that. That's not my car, I swear. It's not, not for my car. All right, so we're here at Preston's OBS. This is the 93 Chevy pace truck. Um, this one's back from Powder Coat, but I think it was last video. But cab's on, plumbing's done, wiring has started. So now we're getting all the wiring done, going. Inside looks like a mess, maybe. Maybe next week we'll fire this one up. Um, it's close, but I don't know if it's close enough that I can confidently say next week, but it's kind of what we're gonna hope for. Maybe fire this thing up next week. Here we've got Marlin's engine. Like I was talking about earlier, like the head bolts that were in it were obviously used. And then we find cool things like this, like this lifter or rocker support's broken. So, Every time we think we're there, we find something else. So these are all the old parts. You can see we're getting new parts. I've got this side all buttoned up. I got trunning upgrade in the rockers and we upgraded the springs. Measured for the correct length push rods. So we got all those in, but now I'm just waiting for that um, rocker support. Then we can put this side back together. Everything in the engine now is new, except for some sensors, but um, new timing set. So crank gear cam gear, timing chain, melon, oil pump, all that stuff's new, obviously new head gaskets. Um, we had to mill, or not we, but the machine shop milled like five thousandths off the, like they decked the block, and they also had to deck the heads because of how bad this stuff was, so we had to get some custom sized uh, push rods, and then we used an LSA head gasket to give us a little bit of that thickness back. But. Uh, as soon as I get that support, we can put this back together and roll this over to Frank. He can get it painted. We're gonna leave like the intake manifold and the Holly valve covers. We'll, uh, we'll leave those the color they are. With satin, it could be off a little bit. We're gonna hope that it's not off enough that you notice because we don't wanna take all that apart too. But anyway, the reason I say maybe next week on that one is because I'd rather get this one going first this one's already all wired and everything just needs to be put back in after paint, plugged in, and then if you've been watching for a while, you saw that, quit going over to that car. We're talking about Marlin's truck. Quit going to the car. We'll, we'll get to the car. Um, but this thing was like ready to fire up, scheduled for tuning to everything when we found these issues. So this is my priority, get this thing running. If we can have it to where he can come over once, get both these running even better. All right, you wanna look at the car? All right, this is my Audi. This is what I drive almost every day because I don't, I've already got too many miles on my diesel. So I bought this like a year ago almost, probably now. Um, and just like anything, you can't leave it alone. So right when I first got it, I did a bigger heat exchanger and a bigger crank pulley and the tuning and everything to make this car faster than it already was. And I bought an exhaust kit and I had mufflers laying around and I bought another muffler with the little X pipe built into it. These cars are known for rasping and I don't want rasp. So there's one, two, three, three mufflers and four cats on it now. We're gonna go to uh, just three mufflers and no cats because the supercharger with the bigger pulley is known to blow out the material in the cats. So anyway trying to knock out an exhaust on this thing today. Quick, dirty, drive it every day. But maybe now it'll be even faster. It's already quick. But that's it. See you later. Thanks for watching. Taco time. Thanks for subscribing. It's lunch. Brian's, Brian's got to go pick up some for his Maverick. Make sure you tune in to the Grinder TV channel. Make sure you tune in to the Grinder TV channel. You heard it here, Ferk. Oh, no. Folks. 
Oh, hey, let's make some announcements. Okay. If you stuck around this long, here's a couple announcements. Uh, we'll do three announcements. Number one, Bronco that's in the booth over at Frank's Game Primer is going to SEMA this year. So that'll be our second time as C10 builders only uh, taking a Bronco to SEMA. Uh, the first one went with precision replacement products. You guys do all the weather seals and glass and all that stuff. This time, this year, it's going with uh, UP Auto, or United Pacific, as most, most of us in the industry know them. So we will have uh, Bronco for Paradise Customs, yep. Central Hall, United Pacific booth. Come see all the Bronco products. Come see all the lights that we use on, not the Audi, but pretty much everything in the shop. Um, second announcement is uh, Precision Replacement Products, who this will be our third year in a row going to see me with them. Third year in a row. Um, we must be like trustworthy or something. Like we, maybe we have a reputation for finishing stuff and getting it done and having it look good and having to drive into the show and not having them like stress. They're waiting on us. Yeah. We're not vice versa, which I feel like happens to a lot of companies. So uh, Manny's truck, the 67, because no fender and bed lights. Yep. So 67 C10, um, that truck, which is over at Frank's, the cab is, Actually, everything's painted. They painted the yep. painted the bed last night. Yep. So painted. fully painted, needs to be color sanded and buffed and assembled. So that truck is gonna be in Central Hall with precision, precision replacement products. So that's our two SEMA announcements. Um, we have a third. We'll talk about that when it gets here. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. We This one almost went, the pace truck, but it got ixnade for another one that we're doing, which I haven't told Preston that yet, So, but he doesn't watch these. So, rambling in. Um, third announcement, Dino's Get Down. As everybody knows that watches these videos, probably knows about Dino's Get Down. Probably 90% of the people that know about Dino's Get Down also know about our annual open house. So this year, we're still working on fun stuff for the open house, but this is our, I'm calling it the decade party. So this is our 10 years here. Um, actually, we're 10 years here this month, but the party will be in November. So Thursday, November 15th, I think? 14th, 15th, 16th, something like that. I just wrote the email, but um, anyway, Thursday, the day before Dino's get down, the Thursday after SEMA, uh, we'll be having another open house here. We're gonna try to figure out a way to make it a little bit extra special because it's 10 years. Um, just talked to Eddie over at AMD. They're doing something special too. There's a page on Facebook for you can go and follow. Don't know it off the top of my head because I just got it yesterday. But Eddie from AMD is doing like a Chevy week after SEMA. So Tuesday they've got something, Wednesday they got something. And Wednesday is like jam packed. I think they have something in the morning starting like nine o'clock in the morning. Then they've got a noon stop. And then I think the noon stops at All American Billet, I think. And then they're doing a cruise from All American Billet um, over to Dixon. And so there'll be something going on over at Dixon. Like last year, Travis Pastrana was there. So um, AMD and Dixon put that on. And then that goes into the night on Wednesday. And then Thursday, obviously for vendors, is set up at Dino's. And then we'll have our open house starting at about 5.30. Don't show up early. We've gone through this before. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it this year, but since you've watched this far, don't show up early, 5.30, okay? Other businesses here, let them close. Then come on by. Free pizza, as always. Uh, free food and drinks, fun for the family. Buy your shirt, so you can wear your shirt at Dino's the next days. Wrap this thing up, go get your shirts and hats on the website, we'll have some new stuff soon. See you in two weeks. Peace. Bye, suckers. <laughs>